I'm bored. Bored, my dear Charles. She gives me nothing to do. She refuses to let me play my part. Well, have you actually written to Her Majesty, sir? Written to her? I've spoken to her. I begged her to give me a proper job, and she won't listen. Apparently, she feels I'm not responsible enough. I lack gravitas. I understood there was some talk of you going to Ireland, sir. What? Oh, yes, yes. Gladstone wanted me to go to Dublin as the Queen's permanent representative, but she wouldn't hear of it. I can't say I'm altogether sorry. It's not really the sort of thing I'm after. Now we have a new government, I dare say it'll be dropped altogether. Yeah. How do you find Mr. Disraeli, sir? Disraeli? Mm. He's a tricky devil. I never quite know where I am with him. But still, I like the man. Perhaps you'll have some ideas. Sir. No, I doubt it. Don't think he altogether trusts me. Sir? But it's not his fault or Gladstone's. It's the Queen. I cannot understand it. I was trained for 20 years, made to work, to study, all day, every day, because one day, as my father never tired of reminding me, much would be expected of me. All that effort, all that work, for what? Nothing. Nothing is expected of me because I am given nothing to do. It is very frustrating, sir. Do you know, Charlie, if I don't find something soon, I think I'll go mad. I will, you know. If she doesn't change her mind and give me something to do, I'll go stark staring mad. such a relief, such huh? a holiday for us. Have you visited our Russia? Alas, I'm afraid I've never... Oh, no, well, I love it, of course. How could I do otherwise? For the sake of my beloved Sasha, I would put up with anything. But the court in St. Petersburg, it's so stiff, so formal. Oh, what's the word? Protocol. Oh, how I hate that word. I suffocate with protocol, my dear Lord Ellsworth. And they're so old-fashioned, you would never believe... Dance as gracefully as ever, of course. Thank you. And look as beautiful. Your Royal Highness has always known how to compliment the lady. Well, I mean it, Edith. I know you do. She's beautiful, isn't she? Mom? Edith Ainsworth. <laughs> look at poor Minnie trying to get him to keep time. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. That's better. We'll make a dance of you, yes. I'm afraid I've very little ability at this sort of thing. Oh, nonsense. You're doing it very nicely. Your wife dances well, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Of course, before her illness, my darling Alex used to... But Her Royal Highness still... Oh, yes, but not like she used to. Oh, in the old days, she hardly missed a dance. I sometimes think she preferred to sit with Oliver Montague and to watch. I notice he always claims the first waltz after supper. Yes, isn't it sweet? He's such a devoted man. I see Montague's at his usual station. Yes. What do you make of him? Oliver? Never really thought about him. He seems a good man at his job. Very loyal to the prince and the princess. If you're suggesting what I think you're suggesting, my dear brother, you're barking up the wrong tree. Oliver's far too straight-laced for anything like that. It's all very honourable, I assure you. You know, uh, <clears throat> Edith Ellsford is a damn pretty woman. Yes. I'm going to have a smoke. Are you coming? What? Oh, yes. Yes, good idea. Ah, Prime Minister. Good evening, Lord Randolph. Lord Blanford. Good evening. Not dancing, Prime Minister. I'm afraid these old legs are not quite so nimble as they used to be. <laughs> I must congratulate you, Mr. Disraeli, on a splendid majority. Uh, how many? Enough, I fancy, enough. Fifty <laughs> overall. Don't be taken in, my dear fellow. The Prime Minister is delighted with the result of the election. We all are. It came in good time. Ah, uh, I think they've stopped playing. Uh, not for long. The Prince is in good form tonight. They'll go on until the small hours. Oh, dear. Now, what's the matter, Prime Minister? Don't you like a good party? Have a drink. Thank you. 
I must confess I find the band a trifle noisy. <laughs> Russians seem to be enjoying themselves. I hope so. That, after all, is why we're here. Indeed. Oh, yes. This is all in their honour, you know. You remember that row over Prince Alfred's fiancée? The Grand Duchess Marie? Yes. The Russians wanted her given precedence over the Princess of Wales. The devil they did. The Queen soon put a stop to it, of course. But I gather the Tsar was somewhat offended. <laughs> the Grand Duchess was badly advised. I dare say. Anyway, this is the Prince's way of healing the breach. I see. Clever of him. Good. Very good. Ah, Bertie. It is most diplomatic. <laughs> What's that about our Bertie? You taking my name in vain, Randy, you old fox. Lord Randolph was just explaining to me, sir, your reason for inviting the Sarevich and his wife to this country. <laughs> Stupidly, I hadn't realized that this ball was in their honor. Oh, I see. Yes, well, can't stand family rows, never could. I'd like a drink, Charlie, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, certainly, Your Royal Highness. Anybody else? Carrington? Thank you. Oh, I'm exhausted. What a day. Your Royal Highness found the farewell ceremonies for the Shah of Persia tiring. Yes, I did. And not only the farewell ceremonies, the whole damn visit. Thank God he's gone. <laughs> he was quite a fellow, you know. They say he even paid a visit to Madame Hamilton. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did he bite you? Uh, probably felt more like home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I took him to stay with George Sutherland at Trentham. Uh, well, well, you know George. He's pretty free and easy in his ways. Yes. Anyway, just as we were leaving, the Shah turned to me and said, Absolutely seriously, mind. Too grand for a subject who will have to have his head off when you come to this role. <laughs> 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 the country is in your debt, sir. He cannot have been the easiest of guests. Oh, I quite enjoyed myself, really. After all, someone had to entertain the poor beggar. <laughs> I feel sure Her Majesty must have appreciated your acting as host to His Excellency. Yes, I dare say. Well, come on, Charlie B. What's the matter with you? Aren't there enough pretty women for you? Bland for your old horse. Stir yourself. Randy. There, I feel better now. Right, Rosa. <clears throat> His Royal Highness's recuperative powers are remarkable. You upset him, that speech about the Queen. I know. Stupid of me. I hadn't realized how deeply he resents her attitude. But the man needs a job of work to do. Arranging guided tours for foreign visitors, laying foundation stones. It's not enough. Good God, he's 33. How much longer must he wait? Yes, my predecessor wanted to make him Viceroy of Ireland. Oh, that fiasco. I don't think he was too keen on that himself. No, it needs a subtler approach. Gladstone is always a bit heavy-handed. I must see what I can do. It won't be easy. The Queen set against the idea. Yes. That makes it all the more interesting, don't you think? Happy, darling? Of course. I think it's all going very well. They love being here, Minnie and Sasha. I think they feel freer, more relaxed. Less frightened, too, I dare say. Yes. Been talking to Dizzy. Oh. Apparently, Mama's very pleased with us for looking after the person, gentlemen. Oh, that's good, darling. That's good, isn't it? I noticed you were dancing with the prince earlier. Did you? He dances well, I believe. Yes, he does. <laughs> Have you known him long? Oh, yes, we're old friends. I see. Do you? <laughs> Forgive me. You're looking very beautiful this evening. Thank you, Lord Blanford. <laughs> I suppose I cannot persuade you, Lady Chesterfield. Oh, no, I'm happy to sit here and watch. Really, I prefer it. Good. So do I. <laughs> Who is that woman dancing with Lord Blanford? That, my dearest lady, Aylesford. <laughs> She's very pretty. Yes, she is. And I don't think the prince is the only person in the room to have noticed it. The Prime Minister, ma'am. Oh, thank you, John. Mr. Disraeli. I was just writing to darling Vicky. Your Majesty. Now, how was your visit to Sandrium? Are the Russians still there? Oh, do hope Bertie and Alex didn't keep you up half the night dancing. Did Lady Chesterfield go with you? Oh, I do hope she liked the flowers I sent. They came from the gardens at Osborne, you know. I picked them myself. Your Majesty is too kind to answer Your Majesty's questions in order of asking my visit to Sandringham most pleasant. The Tsarevich and his wife still there. I'm afraid I excused myself early from the dancing, and Lady Chesterfield, who was with me, did the same. But the flowers, which Your Majesty was gracious enough to send her, a fairy gift from Queen Titania herself. 
I think, Mr. Disraeli, that you are laughing at me. I promise you, dear madam, that I am not. Well, I am not sure that I can believe you. However, I'm glad your visit was a success. His Royal Highness is the most lavish of hosts. Yes, I don't doubt that. And, uh, like his father, the most generous of men. Thank you, Mr. Disraeli. And now to work. Do please sit down. Oh. oh, please, Mr. Disraeli. I should prefer it. I get a stiff neck having to look up at you all the time. Your Majesty is most gracious. I used to ache all over after an audience with Mr. Gladstone. Of course, that could have been for a variety of reasons. I cannot think what Your Majesty means. Now, I have read all the reports concerning what I believe you call social reform. All, ma'am. All, Mr. Disraeli. And I am particularly interested in the Artisan's Dwelling Act. Those dreadful slums. You have my unqualified support. I am deeply grateful, ma'am. The knowledge of Your Majesty's feelings will greatly increase our chances of success. Good. There is another matter, ma'am, which I hesitate to mention, as I appreciate Your Majesty's concern over the problem. Oh, what is that? I was much impressed during my visit to Sandringham with His Royal Highness's skill in handling the Russian couple. I'm glad to hear it. And? Well, I was wondering, ma'am, whether the time has not come when we could look for an area in which His Royal Highness's skill might be used for the benefit of the country. Well, Mr. Disraeli, it is not the first time such a proposition has been made. No, Your Majesty. Mr. Gladstone wished to make him Viceroy of Ireland. Yes, Your Majesty. I soon put a stop to that. Your Majesty acted most wisely. I'm sure we could find something more suitable. Well, I shall think about it. I make no promises, mind. But I shall think about it. Your Majesty is most gracious. I am, as always, at Your Majesty's feet. Yes. <laughs> Be careful, darling. You'll exhaust yourself. I don't know how he has the energy after such a meal. <laughs> he enjoys very much. <laughs> He's a great baby, but he loves to play with the children, especially down here at Sandringham. Oh, you're so lucky to have this place. I cannot believe we are sitting here so free. No police, no guards. In Russia, this could not happen. We're surrounded by security the whole time. Are we not, Sasha? My father tries to uh, liberate the rules, but... But can you not simply tell them to go away? No. Too dangerous. I say, many that boy of yours is heavier than he looks. <laughs> He's growing up at last, thank <laughs> Sit God. Sit down, darling. You're all out of breath. He's so like George he was at his age. Have you noticed, Alex, darling? Yes. Your Nicholas and my George. I think they both have a look at darling papa. Yes. God protect him. What's that, darling? Oh, nothing, my dear. Will you and Sasha be shooting again this afternoon? Oh. I expect so. What do you say, Sasha? I would like. Well, take Eddie with you. He does so love it. Very well. Well, come on, Sasha. Let's see what sort of a bag we got this morning. Francis? Eddie? He envies Sasha. Did you know that? Who, Bertie? Yes. He says he has much more real power, a proper part to play in the ruling of his country. But so has Bertie. No, no. The Queen will not let him. And in any case, in this country, the monarch does not rule anymore. My darling Minnie, sometimes I get so worried for him. He gets so angry inside. Well, there must be something. There must be. Good God, I'm 34. I'm not a child. Indeed not, sir. Well, what's the trouble this time? What have I done to displease her? Well, I believe, sir, your recent visit to Paris... No, she wanted you to stop that, didn't she? And then the visit to Baden. Uh, there was talk of gambling in the press. Well, I wish the press had mind its own business. I've never gambled more than I can afford. Where's the harm in that? You're on your side, sir. She disapproves of the way I live, but gives me no chance to earn her respect. If I'm given nothing to do, how could I ever be able to prove to her that I, I'm anything more than a mere playboy? Your Royal Highness's visit to Coventry went off very well, I believe. Oh, yes, but that's the icing on the cake, my dear Disraeli. I'm after something better than that. Uh, has Your Royal Highness anything particular in mind? What? No. No, not yet. But I'll think of something. 
And when I do, when I do, Mr. Prime Minister, I won't take no for an answer. No, Your Royal Highness. <laughs> 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 Well, Oliver, what did you think? Did you enjoy the exhibition? Uh, very interesting. <laughs> oh, Oliver, tell the truth now. You were bored stiff, I know it, I could tell. Well, perhaps there was a little more of it than I'd anticipated. I'm sorry, my dear, I'm afraid I stayed too long. But I love the native work, especially the Indian things. It was kind of you to come, you're much too good to me. If you enjoyed it, then I'm happy. Thank you. Now let's find Bertie and tell him all about it, come. Well, we don't want the membership getting too big. We should try and keep it exclusive. The trouble is, sir, it's become almost a necessity in society for a gentleman to join the Marlborough. Oh, ridiculous. It's your Royal Highness connection with the club, of course, that <clears throat> makes it so popular. Oh, yes, yes, I see that. But still, we must be careful. You remember that American card sharper fellow, Charlie? Oh, dreadful business. We don't want a repetition of that sort of thing. No, indeed, sir. Oh, sir. <clears throat> oh, Alex. Bertie. How was the exhibition? Wonderful, wonderful. Good afternoon, Lord Lanford, Lord Clarence, and Francis. I wish you had come, darling. There was so much, I'm afraid Oliver was quite exhausted. A whole room entirely devoted to Indian ivory work. Exquisite. What have you been doing? Oh, we've just been discussing club business. Oh, and the pictures. It looks such a beautiful country, darling, so exotic. I should love to go there. Have you ever been to India, Lord Blandford? No, ma'am. It's very strange. The country is full of kings and princes, as far as I can see, and none of us has ever been there. <laughs> well, I won't disturb you any longer. You can go back to talking about your stuffy old club. <laughs> I will see you at dinner, I hope. Uh, Alex, my dear, you must forgive me. I'm afraid I shall not be with you this evening. Something I have to sort out of my stuffy old club. Oh, I see. Very well. Goodbye, then, Lord Blandford, Lord Carrington, <laughs> Oliver. Well, now, gentlemen, where were we? The champagne jollies, my guy. Champagne jollies, my guy. Good for any game at night, my boys. Good for any game at night, my boys. Champagne jollies, my guy. Champagne jollies, my guy. Good for any game at night. Say, Joe. Sir? Tell me, Joe, what do you know about India? <laughs> be careful, be careful. Don't hurt him. Oh, 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 come oh, along, Charlie. Oh, no, I can't. Come on, Miss Of course Mills. you could. Go on, have a try. Oh, dear. <laughs> well, I don't think I can catch him. <laughs> Sticking in somewhere, isn't it? No. Good natured fellow, old Ellsworth. Yes. Spotting Joe. Simply very noisy games. What did you say, my dear? A noisy game. It is, it is indeed. It's rather hard on poor old Davis. Oh, I don't think you need worry. It's a kind of party piece with him. I think he rather enjoys it. Has the prince spoken to him? Not yet, but I'm sure he will. I'm convinced he's got something on his mind. <laughs> there now. Thank you, dear Lord Ellsworth. I'm sure you've had quite enough for one evening. <laughs> Come along, everybody. Let's go into the hall. There's more room there. We can play clump. Clump! <laughs> Come along, Mr. Disraeli. You and Lady Chesterfield must play too. My dear. Thank you, Your Royal Highness. I'm afraid I shouldn't be very good at it. Of course you will. We'll make a rule. You can play sitting down. Sitting down? Oh, dear. I'm afraid that wouldn't be much good, would it? <laughs> Mr. Disraeli. Your Royal Highness. A word with you, if I may. Of course, sir. I think I've found something. Indeed, sir. Something for me to do. Something really worthwhile. May I ask what it is? I want to make an official visit to India. Come. A visit to India? That is certainly an unusual idea. It has been with me for some time, but I felt that I should consider it thoroughly before seeking your permission. That was very sensible of you, Bertie. Would you like the more tea? No, thank you, Mama. 
I should be grateful if we could speak privately about this. Oh, you can speak freely in front of Brown. He's very discreet. I should be grateful. Thank you, John. That will be all. Have you finished your tea? Yes, thank you. I'll take the tray then. You see, dearest Mama, I have felt increasingly that I should like to get away from the sort of life that Alex and I are forced to lead here in England. You are not taking Alex with you, I hope. No, no, of course not. Her place is here with the children. Oh, yes, I'm sure she understands that. No, it's from my own point of view. Well, a tour of India would, I suppose, take you away from those frivolous, pleasure-seeking persons whose company seems so much a part of your life here. And I am anxious, as you know, to be of some use to my country. The Prime Minister has often told me so. Have you spoken of your plans to him? Well, it seemed wiser to get his approval before troubling you, Mama. So Mr. Disraeli approves the idea? Oh, entirely, and the cabinet too. I see. Well, Bertie? My dearest wish is to serve you in this. I dare say. And to try to become more worthy of him. Dearest Bertie, well, if you really want to go, I suppose I cannot withhold my permission. Thank you, Mama. Well, gentlemen, I am happy to say that we have done it. Our young Prince Hal, with the help of your humble servant, has got himself a job. He's to make an official visit to India. Oh, I should perhaps add that Her Majesty has only given permission on the understanding that His Royal Highness had already obtained the approval of Her Majesty's ministers. But I hope, gentlemen, that we may overlook His Royal Highness's anticipation of the event in that respect. Will the Princess accompany him? I think not, Mr. Cross. In fact, I believe she has not yet been told of His Royal Highness's plans. Is it true? Alex, my dear, whatever's the matter? Is it true? Is what true? Oliver says you are going to India. A state visit, is it true? What the devil does Oliver know about Don't it? Don't blame him. He heard it quite casually at his club. But I was going to tell you, of course. Then it is true. Why didn't you tell me? When do we leave? There is so much to be done. I shall need an entirely new wardrobe. Alex, my darling Alex, how can I explain to you? I did not tell you because this is something I have to do alone. I'm going to India in my own right as the heir apparent. Alone? You mean I'm not to go with you? No. You see, my but dear... that's ridiculous. Why am I not to come? I came with you to Egypt. Why am I not to go to India? There are to be no women in the party. Oh, that's too silly. Of course I shall come. I've always wanted to go to India. It will be like our trip to Egypt, only better. You shall see. I'm afraid it's not possible. In any case, the strain would be too much for you. It's difficult for ladies to move about there. Nonsense, my darling. I am completely better now. Oh, how exciting it will be. India, I've dreamed of Alex, going there. you must listen to what I'm saying. I am going alone. It is already decided. The arrangements have been made. You do not want me with you. It's not a you question of whether... You prefer to be with your friends. No. You do not care what no, happens to no, me. No, no, no. That is why you kept it from me. You do not trust Alex, me. Alex, you must understand that no. when I give an... I do not understand. And I do not agree to it. I will not be left behind. I will go to India with you. I am your wife. It is my right. But, dearest, it if is... If you will not listen, I shall speak to the Queen. It will do no good. When I got Mama's consent, it was given only on the understanding that you would remain here with the children. Understand, Alex, dear, why you were so anxious to visit that continent. 
I believe the climate is very sultry, most unsuitable for ladies. But, Mama, I've always wanted to go to India, always. It has been my dream. Well, that's as may be, but your place is with the children. You surely cannot deny that. I think the husband comes first. Yes, dear, of course. And since it is his wish that you should stay with the children, I am surprised at your determination to do otherwise. But it is so unfair. Mama, please do not be angry with me. But it is my dearest wish to be with Bertie. Please say that I may go. Now, Alex, calm yourself. You must understand that I am doing this for your own good. I remember dear Albert said to me once when he refused something I wanted very much. I love you far too much to let you do what would do you harm. And so it is on this occasion. But what harm could it possibly do me? The harm that always comes when we neglect our duties in pursuit of selfish pleasures. But, Mama, I... No, Alex, that is enough. We will not talk of it any more. I am deeply sorry you feel as you do, but I cannot consent to your accompanying the Prince of Wales. It would not be right. And now, if you will forgive me, we are keeping the Prime Minister waiting. Thank you, John. It is ready. I am most displeased. This Indian expedition is causing nothing but trouble. I wish I had never given my consent. Your Majesty, The I... Princess of Wales has just been begging me to let her go. So undignified. And the list of the Prince's companions that you submitted to me. Well, it leaves a great deal to be desired. I think His Royal Highness feels... Oh, I know very well what His Royal Highness feels. And I can only say that if I had known he intended to take with him gentlemen like Lord Carrington and Lord Charles Beresford, I should never have allowed him to go. A fashionable set. Well, I dare say the trip will prove disastrous and then I shall be blamed. The world is sometimes very unfair. Is it not, Mr. Disraeli? It is, ma'am. It is indeed. Goodbye. 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 Francis? I wanted to go with him, Charlotte. I wanted to go with him so much. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the occasion well. Yeah. So does Charlie B. I should say I do, sir. <laughs> it was in Ceylon, beginning of December last year. The day I got my first elephant. Yes, yeah. that was it, sir. Yes. Ah, yes, that was later. This was another beast. Took a shot at the animal, yeah. fell down. We all thought it was dead. Yeah. So I hacked off the brute's tail, and then Charlie here jumped up and started to dance a hornpipe on its rump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here was the odd thing. While I was cutting off its tail, the elephant didn't make a move. But as soon as Charlie here started to dance, it got up and tottered off into the jungle. I'm <laughs> <laughs> also surprised he doesn't go there and watch the beast. <laughs> evidently, evidently didn't care for Charlie's dancing. <laughs> Heavy footy, my dear fellow. That's, that's, that's unfair. unfair. That's unfair. Ah, oh, Francis, no word yet from Lord Salisbury. Yes, sir. He's undertaken that the officers you spoke of will be replaced. Good. The sooner we see an end to that kind of offensive behaviour, the better. Just because a man has a black face and a different religion from our own, no reason why he should be treated like a brute. I've written to the Queen. Would you care to see tomorrow's programme, sir? Oh, a tiger shoot. Yes, I shall look forward to that. Sir Young Bahadur has promised Your Royal Highness some good sport. I understand he has a thousand riding elephants 
and 10,000 soldiers to act as beaters. Has he? Oh. By God, the old savage is determined to outdo us all. <laughs> <laughs> Hot knife, isn't it? Yeah. Thank heaven His Royal Highness has decided to give up wearing tails. This new style is a damn sight cooler. I believe they're calling it a dinner jacket. Are they indeed? Oh, I say, Francis, um, what tent is that zoologist fellow? What's his name? Uh, oh, Bart. Bart, yes. And during our stay in Baroda, some curious wild beast fights were staged for us. Elephants, rhinoceros, and buffalo pitted against each other. Fortunately, none was hurt excepting one buffalo who had his horn broken, which I fear must have hurt him a great deal. Buffalo? Yes, darling, you know what a buffalo is? Like a big shaggy cow <laughs> with curved horns. <laughs> I have had great tiger shooting. The day before yesterday, I killed six, and some were very savage. Two were man-eaters. Today, I killed a tigress, and she had a little cub with her. I hope to bring him back with me for you to see. When is Papa coming home, Mama? Will it be soon? Yes, my darling, very soon. I wish I was in India with Papa. So do I. A triumph, ma'am. His Royal Highness is fated and admired wherever he goes. I understand that there were more than eight Maharajas at the Calcutta Durbar. His visit has proved successful beyond my most sanguine expectations. I'm glad to hear it, Mr. Disraeli. Uh, of course, such enthusiasm could only have been inspired by the knowledge that uh, His Royal Highness is, as it were, Your Majesty's representative. It may be so. However, I have had a letter from him concerning the rude manner in which some of our political officers treat the princes and chiefs to whom they are appointed. I cannot say how strongly I deplore this kind of behaviour. I hope something is being done about it. It is, ma'am. It is. Lord Salisbury is taking steps. Good. Apart from that unfortunate matter, it is true that all the reports we have had suggest that the visit has been something of a success. Indeed, ma'am. That is why, if I may make so bold, I feel the time has come for the government to introduce its bill to proclaim Your Majesty Empress of India. Empress of India. Well, Mr. Disraeli, I won't pretend that I am not pleased. I have felt for some time that I should assume the title. The King of Prussia calls himself an emperor with far less reason. to learn of it from the newspapers. That's what irks me, Francis. I can only think it was an oversight on the part of the Prime Minister's office. I have, after all, a vested interest in the future of the Crown, and if the Queen is to be created Empress of India, I should have been told of it first. Exactly. I mean, good God, here I am in the middle of the blasted country and the last to be told. Now it's not good enough. No, sir. Well, you'd better write to Disraeli. I'd like him to know exactly how I feel. Yes, very well, sir. I had thought that our success here might have altered their attitude. Evidently, I was wrong. I I'm sure you're right, Highness. No, no, my dear fellow, leave him, leave him, leave him. By the way, what was that noise last night? I believe Lord Charles let loose an armadillo in Mr. Bartlett's tent, the zoologist said. Yes, yes, I know and the fellow. Mr. Bartlett became somewhat alarmed. Well, he certainly made enough noise about it. <laughs> oh, morning, Joe. Were you involved in this prank of Charlie's last night? If I might have a word in private, sir. Yes, of course, my dear fellow. Thank you, Francis. I'm afraid I've had some rather upsetting news from home, sir. Yes? A letter from my wife. What's the matter, Joe? I don't quite know how to tell you, sir. The fact is, she intends to run off with Blandford. The devil she does? Yes, apparently been going on for some time. Oh, my dear fellow. If I might have Your Royal Highness's permission to return to England. Yes, yes, of course, Joe. I am very sorry. Thank you, sir. The man's a blackguard. I blame myself a good deal. Shouldn't have left her, you see. What are you going to do? I don't know, sir. I don't care much for the idea of a divorce, but I may have no alternative. Yes. Yes, I, I see that. If Your Royal Highness will forgive me. Yes, of course, Joe. I'll, I'll see you before you go, I hope. Sir. Did you know about this, Francis? There has been talk, Your Royal Highness. Awkward business. Yes. This telegram has just arrived. I felt you should see it at once. 
Oh, it's from Randy. Well, I'm damned. He says he'll undertake to persuade his brother not to elope with Lady Aylesford if I'll use my influence with Joe to stop a divorce. Sir. Well, what's got into the fellow? It would mean social ruin for both families. Yes, I dare say, but I don't see how I can interfere. I mean, it's a private matter between Joe and Lord Blandford. Yes. Should never have got out in the first place. If people can't manage their affairs more sensibly, they don't deserve to have them. He's in Cairo now. In a little over a month, he'll be home. I long to see him, Charlotte. You cannot know how much. And he is bringing such presents for the children. Lions and tigers and elephants. <laughs> they will all have to go to the zoo, I suppose. His Royal Highness trip has been a great success, Mom. Hmm? And it's all been such a success, Charlotte, apart from this wretched business with the Aylesfords. That was most regrettable. I feel so sorry for him, such a dear man. And Lady Aylesford, too, I'm fond of them both. Now, I suppose I may not receive them. It's all so stupid. These things should be kept private. Yes, Williams, what is it? Lady Aylesford is in the hall, ma'am. She has asked if she may see you. Oh, yes, that would be perfectly all right. Ask her to come up. But, ma'am... What an extraordinary thing. I had no idea she was even in London. And it is so long since we last met. Do you suppose she would like tea? Charlotte, dear, would you see to it? But, Mom... I've no idea. I'm sure why she should call upon me so unexpectedly. Thank you, Charlotte. Lady Aylesford, Lord Allington, Lord Randolph Churchill, ma'am. Your Royal Highness, I'm deeply grateful. Lady Aylesford? But I thought he... What can I do for you? I think you know, ma'am, of the circumstances involving my brother, Lord Blandford, and this lady. Yes, of course. Do sit down, Lady Aylesford. What I have to say will not take long, ma'am. I have repeatedly urged His Royal Highness to persuade Lord Aylesford not to proceed in this matter. Unfortunately, he has seen fit to ignore my requests. And therefore, I have no alternative but to tell you, ma'am, that I have in my possession letters from the Prince to Lady Aylesford of such a nature that were they to be published, His Royal Highness would never sit on the throne of England. Lord Randolph... I'm sorry to have had to trouble you, ma'am, with this matter, but I am determined to use every means in my power to prevent this case coming before the public. And therefore, in the light of what I've said, I must ask you to persuade His Royal Highness to compel Lord Aylesford to withdraw his suit. That is all, I think. Mom, I'm afraid... No! You... I will not hear any more. I think you had better go. I shall, of course, inform Lord Aylesford of what has happened. Thank you, Mom. You should never have seen her. Or that dreadful old Randolph. I can't think what possessed you. But, Mama, I told you. I misheard the name when she was announced. I thought William said Lady Aylesbury. Disgraceful behaviour. But, Mama, I Not can't... you, not you. Speaking of Lord Randolph, that a mere subject should be prepared to destroy the Prince's good name merely in order to prevent some stupid society scandal. I find it difficult to believe. I think he meant what he said, Mama. Yes. Well, you did right to come to me. And Bertie has been indiscreet, I'm afraid that's clear. I shall have to talk to Mr. Disraeli. It is too bad, just as things were going so nicely. I understand Lord Randolph is saying he has the crown of England in his pocket. Lord Randolph was always given to overstatement. All the goodwill which the princess achieved with his success in India put to risk because of a squalid society scandal. One more divorce case and nobody will take him seriously. Well, he'd better be told, I suppose. 
We must pray he keeps his head. Write this down, will you? Sir and dear prince. The man's a scoundrel. He was my friend, Charlie. That's what I can't understand. And to involve Alex in all this. My God, I'll fight him. He shan't get away with it. Look, Charlie, this is what I want you to do. We'll put you off at Brindisi. Travel to London as quickly as you can. Get the fellow to name his seconds. I'll meet him anywhere he likes outside England. Pistols. See to it, will you? Sir. Well, what are you waiting for? You heard what I said, didn't you? Didn't you? Sir. He's challenged me to a duel, Prime Minister. I thought you'd heard. A duel? With pistols on the north coast of France. Of course, the idea is absurd, as His Royal Highness very well knows. Come to think of it, I dare say that's why he issued the challenge. He was always braver in word than in deed. Lord Randolph... In any case, I... it certainly doesn't alter my mind. I shall neither retract nor withdraw. I see. Well, gentlemen, I have advised His Royal Highness to return home at once. I must tell you, Lord Randolph, I do not think these letters are as damaging as you seem to expect. Her Majesty has implicit confidence in the Prince of Wales. Has she? Well, he may need it. And now, Prime Minister, if you will forgive me. Yes, yes, of course, of course. I must apologize, Prime Minister. I think Lord Randolph says more than he means. Yes, yes, of course, of course. The crown of England in his pocket. Well, we shall see. We shall see. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I wanted to see you first yes, before... Yes, darling. I understand. I understand. There was nothing in it, you know. Nothing at all. I'm only sorry because of the pain that that monster's caused you. It doesn't matter, my darling. It doesn't matter now. You were right not to give in and to take sides. It will all be all right. I'm sure it will. I don't know that I care very much as long as you believe me. I do, my darling. Of course I do. You say that you challenged Lord Randolph to a duel because of his behavior to me. Yes, I did. Oh, darling, I do love you. <laughs> Come on, let's go up. Alex, what is it, my dear? There are a lot of people on the dock. I don't know. You don't know what sort of a welcome I shall get, is that what you mean? It might be better to wait for a little while. No, if I'm unpopular because of this ridiculous scandal, better to face it straight away. Don't believe in skulking in corners. In any case, that'd only make matters worse. Will you come with me? Of course I will. It was the same at Covent Garden, Mama. An ovation lasting several minutes. They even clapped and cheered before the start of each act and at the end, too. Did they, indeed? I should have preferred to dine quietly with Alex, Mama, but in view of the Aylesford business, it seemed good to go to the opera, give the public a chance to express their feelings. I think that was wise, Bertie. And now, Mr Disraeli, I believe the whole unfortunate business is settled. Yes, ma'am. Lord Aylesford has decided not to proceed with the divorce. And His Royal Highness, as I understand, already received a note of apology from Lord Randolph. I have. I gather he and his wife are planning a trip to America. It seems the contents of his pocket did not turn out quite so exciting as he anticipated. The contents of his pocket? What can you mean, Mr. Disraeli? Oh, nothing, ma'am. Nothing of figure of speech. Uh, I fancy Lord Randolph was surprised at the warmth of His Royal Highness's reception on his return to England. I see. Well, good. I'm glad the whole thing is over. Perhaps, Bertie, you will take a little more care in future of your choice of friends. Now, Mr. Disraeli, I have something to show you. Thank you, Leopold. Yes, ma'am. Look what Bertie has brought me from India. 
leaves from a journal of my life in the Highlands. Your own leaves, ma'am. Translated into Hindustani. So handsomely bound. Oh, ma'am, my warmest congratulations. A splendid gift. I think you can guess how much it means to me. We authors, ma'am, indeed I can. Thank you. Dear Balmoral, it was the place he loved best, you know. Oh, well, you and I have work to do, Mr. Disraeli. Leopold, forgive me, my dears. I'm most concerned about this trouble in the Balkans. Will it mean war with Russia? And why is Mr. Gladstone so agitated? I hope we may be able to avoid war, ma'am. Mr. Gladstone's agitation, however, is quite another matter. How long has that been going on? What, my darling? Leo, acting as a sort of private secretary. He has a key, you know, a personal key to the dispatch boxes. Is that important? Well, it's more than I've ever had. I think I shall go to Greece, Bertie. Greece? But why? Whatever for? I haven't seen my brother for such a long time. Alex, darling, it's not because of this Aylesford business, is it? No. No, of course not. But the doctors say that I need a change. And really, I should love to see Willie again. Should I have only just come back? Never mind, my darling. I shan't stay away for long. And you will have plenty to do. Will I? I wonder. Well, gentlemen, I'm happy to tell you that the Anglo-Russian deadlock has been resolved. A defensive alliance with Turkey concluded. Our position in Cyprus confirmed. We have kept the Russians out of the Mediterranean. I think I may say, gentlemen, a very satisfactory state of affairs. Yeah, yeah, The dispatch is for the Prince of Wales, Prime Minister. No, don't send them. I've changed my mind. He's very restless at the moment. We don't want him upsetting things. But His Royal Highness will be expecting them. We'll write him a note, my dear fellow. That'll keep him happy. Write this down. Dearest Prince, I write to tell you that I did something yesterday for Greece. An adjustment of the frontier in her favor. A small thing, but by no means to be despised. It was all done for Her Royal Highness' sake. In haste, ever, sir and dear prince, etc., etc. Ever, sir and dear prince. Come in. Uh, forgive me, sir. It's time your royal highness was changing for the opera. Oh, is it? Anything wrong, sir? No, no, Francis. I'm just a little tired, that's all. I may not bother with the opera this evening. I see, sir. In that case, will you be going to Sir Alan Young? Who? Uh, sir Alan Young, the Arctic explorer, sir. You were going on there after the opera. Oh, was I? I'd forgotten that. It's a reception in your honor, sir. Stratford Place off Oxford Street. Yes. Do you know, Francis, I, I don't think I'll go there either. Make my excuses to Sir Alan, will you? Tell him I shan't be going to his party. <laughs> Charles, my dear fellow, how are you? Alan, forgive me. It's good of you to come. Haven't seen you since you got back from India. Good trip? Um, not bad at all. That silly nonsense between Blansford and Joe Aylesford's wife upset things a bit towards the end, but um, we had some excellent shooting. Good, good. Randy's gone off to America, I hear. Yes, yes best place for him. Poor chap's completely disgraced. We um, don't even mention his name at Marlborough House. So, when are you off to the North Pole again? Oh, I don't know, my dear fellow. When I get bored with all this, I expect. <laughs> Got to do something to keep myself amused. Yes, what is it? Charles, will you excuse me a moment? Yes, of course. Now, Sir Alan, good to see you. I'm afraid I'm a little late. 
Delighted you were able to come, sir. There's someone here who is particularly anxious to meet you. Indeed. If you will follow me, sir. Good evening. Good evening, George. Ready? Arthur. Hello, Lady Clifford. How are you? Charlie. Your Royal Highness, I don't think you know Mrs. Edward Langtry. She and her husband have recently arrived in this country from Jersey. <laughs> Mrs. Langtry, an unexpected pleasure. <laughs> 